What's going on everyone? Cam the Color is back again. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to color correct skin tones in a very specific way that I've had excellent results with in the past. All right, let's just jump right into it. All right, here we are, we're in Resolve. We got our clip here. We got a little grade going on, nothing too crazy. You know, just making it look a little bit more pretty. It's pretty chill, nothing much going on. So. One way that you would normally key would be to go to your CST, go to a node after, go in here, and then pick your skin tones this way, and uh, kind of so-so results. There's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of stuff being picked up. And that is because if you key after your CST, but after you've done some grading up here, this stuff that we mentioned earlier, you are going to be pulling a key based on not only the Rec. 709 image that your CST is actually spitting out, but the grade underneath. Now, since we've adjusted things like the curves, the exposure, some of the primaries, that's obviously gonna change how the colors are showing in the image. So as a result, the keys that you qualify may not actually line up with, with what you would be qualifying were you to just do it off of the base Rec. 709 image. I've found that if you just have your Rec. 709 LUT or color space transform and then you key after that, you'll get the cleanest results versus a bunch of corrections and then your CST and then your key, you know, like that, I don't know. It doesn't always work super well. And if you've got effects going on, things like that, it's gonna be an absolute disaster. So you may be thinking, okay, what about before my Rec. 709 transform? That wouldn't I be keying the most information when the image is in its like rawest and juiciest state, so to speak? Well, you could, and it might work well here, but no, it doesn't. It, this sucks. Like, don't do this. You're going to end up fiddling around with your key forever, trying to get it to work. And, you know, we probably could get it to work in this situation by ch choking down that width a little bit. And since everything's in log, everything's kind of in a shade of gray. So it would be pretty difficult to get a clean key. So my solution is, in fact, to do my keying from a different source in my node tree. Now, what does that mean? So basically, the idea is you've got your main tree where you've got most of your grade going on and then your CST out to Rec. 709 as you always would. However, from this other source, we have a CST coming out here. That is going to be a CST that is going from, uh, well, in this case, I've got the group preclip, my usual technique, uh, where we're going from red wide gamut into Da Vinci wide gamut. If we didn't have that going on, you'd just simply go in here and then hit red wide gamut, RGB, log 3G10 enter that as you would. So basically this is taking the image from log to Rec. 709, just starting from a different source, meaning you can do different stuff. We got two nodes splitting off of it. This is where we are going to be doing our qualifying and then following them are two nodes which are only linked by the alpha output and the regular inputs, the green ones, which actually send through the image signal uh, with all the color data, those are hooked up to our Rec. 709 CST out on the main tree. One goes in here, one goes in here. Then a little parallel mixer comes in and spits them out and then you would continue the rest of your grade. So essentially it's kind of like a little fork in the road, so to speak. So let's say here's our main node tree and then our little qualifier would kind of split off like that and then rejoin the rest of the node tree. So let's build it from scratch real quick, okay? So we got our main tree. We'll toss on our CST, wham bam, thank you ma'am, that looks great. And then we'll continue our node tree here. Uh, this is where we do maybe effects, grain, things like that, look-based things, whatever you want, honestly. Add source from this source, and I'm just gonna steal this note, reset whatever the hell is going on in it, hook this back in. This guy's gonna go in here, boom. So now our source is linked up. We can just copy our CST over from here because it's the exact same color space transform. Let's rename it. Boom. Boom. Uh, yeah, that works. Add node. Corrector. So we'll pop this guy there. Boom. And then we'll add another outside. Just unhook these. And then we'll add a do, 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 parallel mixer. Boom. Bing. Bang. And then boom. And then this CST, don't panic. This just goes in here. And we have our image looking gorgeous once again. Let's just see how it works in practice. So you remember our previous keys, they sucked, they weren't a good time, nothing was going well. Now let's try it with this method. It still probably won't be perfect though, but damn, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, I'm gonna take that. So then it would be much more simple to just choose the things that you want to adjust, use the qualifying tools to sort of clean it up, get what you want, and then we'd probably wanna for the sake of this individual clip, 
hit it with a power window just so it's not picking up any of that green business in the background. But as you can see, that's pretty impressive. And then once you clean up the key using the controls down here in the bottom right, boom, boom, blur radius, and then node key, we'll just invert that. We are making all kinds of great adjustments to our skin tones without affecting anything else. It's everything works great. This is a super clean way of keying. I've had great results with it. It keeps your keys isolated from the rest of your chain as well, which is great for organizational purposes. Anyways, that's about it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find this tip useful in the future. If you don't like it, let me know. If you love it, let me know as well. I'd love to have any kind of discussion going down in the comments below. So until next time, take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Woo!